to take your seats. As a reminder, remember to pick up all rubbish and place it in the receptacles behind the pier. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, before our ceremony ends, I'd like to remind you all to please silence your cell phones. Thank you.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Commander Australian Fleet, Rear Admiral Christopher Smith, Royal Australian Navy will offer the acknowledgement of country. Good morning and welcome to Garden Island. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands and waterways we are gathered on, the Gadigal people of the Aurora Nation. I pay my respects to Elders, past and present, and to all First Nations people who have served and those who continue to serve in the Australian Defence Force. Again, welcome. Thank you, Admiral Smith. Welcome to Historic Garden Island, New South Wales, Australia, and the commissioning of USS Canberra LCS-30. I am Commander Nick Edmiston, the Executive Officer. It is my privilege to welcome you and be your Master of Ceremonies today. We welcome those with us in person and our friends and family here and abroad as they celebrate today's event via live stream. Hi guys, it's your Ombudsman from the Gold Crew. Hoping that you guys have a wonderful time in Australia. Enjoy the commissioning. Can't wait to see you. Congratulations on commissioning the ship. We love you and we miss you. I love you, Daddy. Hey, babe, I just wanted to congratulate you on your ship being commissioned in Australia. Um, I hope you guys have a great time out in town. And don't forget to send me pics. I love you and I miss you so much. Hope to see you soon. Bye. We, we love you, Daddy. We're so excited that you get to be a part of the commissioning of your ship, babe, and in none other than Australia. That's so amazing you get to be a part of that. We love you, and we miss you so very much, and we're so proud of you. We can't wait for you to come home. We are here today to commission the second U.S. Navy warship to proudly bear the name of Australia's capital city. The first USS Canberra CA-70 was named in honor of the Australian heavy cruiser HMAS Canberra, which sank after receiving heavy damage during the Battle of Savo Island on 9 August 1942. The first USS Canberra was commissioned on 14 October 1943. She was decommissioned on 2 February 1970 and stricken from the Naval Vessel Register on 31 July 1978. During her distinguished career, she served in World War II and in the Vietnam War. She earned an impressive seven battle stars. We are honored to have members of her crew with us today. Gentlemen, please stand. Would active duty and veterans from all nations please stand? Would all service members' families please stand? Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your service and sacrifice. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring the ship to life. In just a few moments, the Navy Band will render honors to His Excellency General, the Honorable General David Hurley. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, the United States and Australian national anthems, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Lieutenant Commander Marek Ireland, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, our ceremonial chaplain. Senior Chaplain Paul Stewart, Royal Australian Navy. Mr. Marty Wallens, crew member of USS Canberra, CAG2, and our long glass presenter. <laughs> Mr.
Mr. Ward Cook, USS Canberra Commissioning Committee Chairman and our long last presenter. Captain Matthew Lehman, United States Navy, Littoral Combat Ship Program Manager. Captain Mark Crawford, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 1. Mr. Larry Ryder, Vice President of Business Development and External Affairs, Austin. Admiral Michael M. Gilday, United States Navy, the 32nd Chief of Naval Operations. General Angus Campbell, AO, DSCS, Chief of the Australian Defense Force. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro, the 78th Secretary of the Navy. Mr. Greg Moriarty, Secretary of the Australian Department of Defense. His Excellency, the Honorable Dr. Kevin Rudd, Australian Ambassador to the United States. The Honorable Caroline Kennedy, United States Ambassador to Australia. The Honorable Richard Marles, MP, Deputy Prime Minister of Australia. Her Excellency, the Honorable Margaret Beasley, ACKC, Governor of New South Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Senator the Honorable Maurice Payne, escorted today by Senior Chief Adam Walker, USS Canberra Command Senior Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency General the Honorable David Hurley, AC, DSC, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, escorted today by Commander William Ashley, United States Navy, USS Canberra's Commanding Officer. Honors to His Excellency the Honorable David Hurley. Platform, hand salute. <laughs> Ready, two. Advance the colors.
Retire the colors. Ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Senior Chaplain Stewart will now deliver the invocation. An old Irish proverb, a favorite of the late Senator Ted Kennedy, reminds us there are good ships and there are wood ships, the ships that sail the sea, but the best ships are friendships and may that always be. In that spirit of friendship, we Americans and Australians assemble in the presence of God, the creator of the sea in all its majesty, to pray for the commanding officer and the ship's company of the new USS Canberra and indeed for all mariners who serve and toil upon the waves. Before the Lord, we pray that the sounding of the ship's bell that symbolizes the call to duty, to be on watch, to be vigilant, will be answered with vigor and devotion by all those who sail in her. We pray that the quarter deck of Canberra, that most sacred space on all warships, where solemn ceremonies take place and where souls have been committed to their eternal rest, will ever remind us to honour the sacrifices of our war dead and our veterans, some of whom alive today still carry wounds, visible and invisible. We pray that the ensign of the United States, a symbol of its nation and people, will invoke in the hearts of all who gaze upon old glory a sense of pride and responsibility. May the noble people it represents be blessed with peace and prosperity. And most of all, as we Australians also cherish, may they treasure the gift of freedom, which the late and beloved President Kennedy once reminded us does not come for free but comes at a price. It must be earned and it must be defended. At Annapolis, President Kennedy inspired his audience of naval trainees in these words. I can imagine no more rewarding career and any man who may be asked in this century what he did to make his life worthwhile can respond with a good deal of pride and satisfaction. I served in the United States Navy. So we turn to the Lord, to whom even the tempest of the sea is calmed by his command. And we ask of those who sail in the good ship Canberra will always return home safely and soundly to cheers from loved ones and sweethearts, knowing their ship steers under God's protection and forever sails with our prayers and our good wishes. To this we can all say, Amen. Thank you, Senior Chaplain Stewart. We would like to thank the United States Navy 7th Fleet Band, the Royal Australian Navy, the United States Navy Ceremony Guard, and Australia's Federation Guard for their support today. Additionally, we would like to thank and acknowledge the Royal Australian Navy, without whose support today's ceremony would not have been possible. And we are truly grateful to the USS Canberra Commissioning Committee for their generosity and support. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, Parade Rest.
Ladies and gentlemen, His Excellency General the Honorable David Hurley. Uh, good morning and I too welcome uh, all our visitors today here to Garden Island on a very special occasion in the lives of both Australia and the United States and our respective navies. Could I also begin by acknowledging the traditional owners, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, pay my respects to Elders past and present, their emerging leaders, and be mindful of our responsibilities to the younger generation, so critical to our future today. Could I acknowledge Your Excellency the Honourable Margaret Beasley, the Governor of New South Wales, the Honourable Richard Miles, our Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Defence, her Excellency, the Honourable Caroline Kennedy, Ambassador to the United States of America. His Excellency, the Honourable Dr Kevin Rudd, Ambassador to the United States. Senator, the Honourable Marissa Payne, the ship sponsor and former Minister for Defence. General Angus Campbell, Chief of the Australian Defence Force. Mr Greg Moriarty, our Secretary of the Department. Ms. Jan Adams, Secretary of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Vice Admiral Mark Hammond, Chief of Navy. The Honourable Carlos de Toro, the Secretary of Navy, to our diplomatic corps here, industry senior executives, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honour to welcome you to the ceremonial commissioning of USS Canberra. Today is a momentous day for the crew of this ship. It's also a day of celebration for our navies, a great Navy day as they say. And it's a celebration and a very visible example of our two nations' shared history, contemporary partnership and commitment to the future. From the perspective, from the Australian perspective, it's a continuation from John Curtin's December 1941 call for Australia to turn towards the US. And for Sir Robert Menzies' reaction to Sir Percy Spender when he presented the first draft of the ANZUS Treaty. Good work, Percy. Join me for a brandy. Today we join together for a champagne on a very important occasion. The first USS Canberra was named at the direction of President Roosevelt in honour of HMAS Canberra, which was sunk after receiving heavy damage during the Battle of Savo Island on the 9th of August 1942. The US Ambassador to Australia, in a telegram to the Secretary of State, suggested the act could create a lasting tie between the two countries. President Roosevelt, potentially shortcutting bureaucracy, sent that telegram to the Secretary of Navy saying he thought it was a very good idea. And a month later, the presidential direction was finalised and that lasting tie created. The Battle of Savo was one battle in one war. The lives lost on board HMAS Canberra are just a fraction of the many from both our nations who have made the ultimate sacrifice. It is a single yet poignant example drawn from many from more than a century of our nation's shared histories. American and Australian ships and sailors side by side serving and sacrificing for our nation's shared commitments. Their sacrifice and our nation's relationship and friendship are now honoured through the name Canberra. The presence of the current versions of both HMAS and USS Canberra are evidence of the enduring bond between our two nations. And USS Canberra is a very tangible side of a relationship built on trust, shared values and shared interests. That relationship will be celebrated in our national capital tomorrow with a freedom of entry parade underlining the connection between the ship and its namesake city. It's a relationship that has stood the National Maritime Museum and is with us here this morning. And so these two ships, the modern HMAS Canberra and the USS Canberra are inextricably linked, inextricably intertwined. They are genuinely siblings. And in all that they do, they carry with them the souls of the 84 people who were lost on that night. And as we sit here today before the USS Canberra, a ship which was designed in Fremantle, built by the great Australian company Austal. We do so in the knowledge that there will always be an officer of the Royal Australian Navy who will serve on its crew. We will always know that its sponsor will be an Australian Senator, Maurice Payne, a former Defence Minister who is with us today. We will know 
that its crest bears the Southern Cross and a kangaroo and that it was commissioned on this day in this most unique, unprecedented and historic event where for the first time a new American warship is being commissioned outside of the United States. And in all of that, what we hear is that to America, Australia matters. Next week, I will be hosting the United States Secretary of Defence, Lloyd Austin. And together we will visit Exercise Talisman Saver. And we will watch the men and women of our respective Defence Forces exercise together. And as we do so, we will feel the pride of their service. And we will undoubtedly reflect that the Alliance, the more than a century of mateship, as Australians and Americans have fought alongside each other in every conflict during that period of time, has been and will continue to be both fundamental and astounding. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister Mao. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Michael Gilday. Sydney Harbour, two of the world's premier navies and the commissioning of a new warship. Ladies and gentlemen, shipmates, it just doesn't get any better than this. It's an honor, and I'm humbled to join you this morning to welcome this ship to the fleet. Today, we carry on an important Navy tradition as we hoist the commissioning pennant and announce to the world that this fine warship and that this superb crew are ready, that they are ready for duty, that they're ready to operate at sea, and that they're ready to join the Royal Australian Navy in providing peace and security across the Maritime Commons. Today, we commission USS Canberra into service, not just part of Littoral Combat Ship Squadron 1, not just part of the United States Pacific Fleet. Today, we commission this ship into service as a combat unit that will integrate with the Australian fleet and with a combined maritime force of allies and partners who stand united across the entire Indo-Pacific. And wherever the U.S. Canberra operates, she will proudly bear the name of the Australian capital, honoring the sons and the daughters of this great nation who guide us with their example, who strengthen us with their courage and inspire us with their valor. This image of resilience and optimism will forever be etched in the memories of these sailors and inscribed in their hearts. To the crew of USS Canberra and to your families who support you and serve alongside you, you are the men and the women who underwrite our Navy's commitments to safeguard our country, to defend our allies and partners, and to honor the nation of Australia who has embarked with us on a voyage to the seas of history to defend the freedom and democracy across the world. May God bless you, may God bless Australia, and may God bless our great alliance. Now, it is my distinct privilege to introduce our 78th Secretary of the Navy. He is a man who has demonstrated inspiring and successful leadership time and time again, both in public service and in private business. He is a devoted patriot, he is a sailor's sailor, and he is a champion of the mateship between the United States and Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our, th our 78th Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Good morning, Australia. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Good morning, Australia. Good morning. Excellent, excellent. First, I'd always like to extend my respects to the Australian elders, past, present, and future as well, too. Admiral Gilday, thank you for that introduction. And thank you to your wife, Linda, for your exceptional leadership of our Navy 
and as the First Lady of our Navy. Before I begin my formal remarks, I want to take just one brief moment and thank the chaplain, because a couple of days ago I pulled the chaplain and I said, Chaplain, we need good weather here in Sydney. I said, uh, and he, I think he's come through. Now, some of you Australians may disagree slightly and think that it's a bit cold, but to the ambassador, her son Jack, and to me, this is just another warm day in Boston. I want to express my special thanks to His Majesty the King's representatives, His Excellency General, the Honorable David Hurley, Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, and Her Excellency the Honorable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales as well, for joining us for this morning's historic ceremony to commission the United States ship Canberra LCS 30. It is an honor to share this moment with all of you. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to Prime Minister Albanese, Premier Minns, Deputy Prime Minister Marles, General Campbell, Vice Admiral Hammond, the cities of, Australia, of Sydney and Canberra, and the citizens of Australia, and again, particularly the indigenous people, the traditional custodians of the land and of the sea, for the warm welcome that you have extended to USS Canberra her USS Blue and Gold Cruise. I also want to take a very special moment, if you would just indulge me, to express my thanks to a personal friend of mine. We met, first met 30 years ago when I was a young lieutenant commander sailing back from Desert Storm on one of our destroyers, the USS Preble. We were off the coast of Palma de Mallorca, and we received a maiden SOS call, and her sail ship, Joan Newman, her ship was the Meerman, was sinking off the coast of Palma de Mallorca. There was a slight Australian accent to her voice that day. The USS Preble came to the rescue, and we sailed her sail ship. And we have been friends for the past 30 years. And as the chaplain said earlier, there is no greater ship than friendship. And Joan is here with us today. She is an Australian pioneer. She has been her entire 95 years young. And Joan, would you just please stand up and be recognized? She earlier asked me if she could actually join the crew of the Canberra. I can think of no more appropriate venue for our Navy to conduct our fleet's first ever initial international commissioning ceremony than here in Australia, the home of her ship's namesake. I would also want to extend my thanks to Senator the Honorable Maurice Payne for serving as our ship's sponsor. According to naval tradition, your spirit and presence will guide the USS Canberra and her crew throughout her time in service. We are grateful that you are with us here today, and it is my hope that you will continue to serve as the enduring connection between this ship, her crew, and the people of Australia. Additionally, I want to recognize again U.S. Ambassador Kennedy for her lifelong leadership and her team for her guidance and support to help this day, make this day possible. And finally, thanks to the USS Canberra Commissioning Committee, chaired by Mr. Ward Cook, for all your hard work that has brought this day to its fruition. Ladies and gentlemen, this truly is a special occasion for our fleet, as our CNO stated, and our nation to be here with you in Australia, one of our nation's closest allies, to celebrate the commissioning of our Navy's newest warship that is destined to serve throughout the Indo-Pacific region. And when the crews of USS Canberra execute their first mission alongside the Royal Australian Navy here in the Indo-Pacific, they will carry on the proud tradition of naval cooperation between the United States of America and Australia that dates back over a century. Since the founding of your Navy in 1911, our two navies have enjoyed a strong and enduring relationship that has stood the test of time throughout numerous global conflicts, from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, to the Gulf War, and most recently the global counterterrorism campaigns of the last 22 years. As some of the earlier speakers touched on this morning, there is no more prominent example in our shared naval heritage 
of a willingness to give all for each other than the sacrifice of His Majesty's Australian ship Canberra and her crew, who ensured that our United States Marines were able to successfully gain a foothold on Guadalcanal during World War II. To honor those sacrifices, USS Canberra, in October of 1943, the first United States Navy cruiser to bear the name of a foreign capital. I mention this again to highlight the long legacy of partnership, of mateship between our two nations. To the commanding officers, Commander Ashley and Commander Barber, as well as the officers and sailors of USS Canberra's blue and gold teams, I know the sense of pride that you are filled with today, as well as your eagerness to get underway for your first deployment after commissioning, having been in your shoes over 20 years ago when I served as the commissioning commanding officer of then the USS Bulkley. I will note that my former ship's namesake, Vice Admiral John Bulkley, was responsible for evacuating General Douglas MacArthur via patrol boats from the Philippines during World War II to prevent his capture by Japanese forces, enabling him to reestablish his command here in Australia. And while the world today is much different than the one that Vice Admiral Bulkley sailed through during his time in service, the USS Canberra is entering the fleet during a period of global uncertainty. We, along with our allies and partners around the world, are facing significant challenges in every environment that we operate in, from the seabed to the stars, as well as the cyber domain. Across the globe, it is apparent that the rules-based international order that for decades has fostered economic growth and underpinned a period of relative global stability is being again challenged. In Europe, Russia continues its unprovoked and illegal campaign against Ukraine, violating its territorial national sovereignty. As President Biden reaffirmed last week at the NATO conference in Vilnius, Lithuania, our commitment to Ukraine will not weaken. We will stand for liberty and freedom today, tomorrow, and as long as it takes. In the Middle East, Iran continues to be a destabilizing regional force, interfering with the free flow of maritime commerce via the campaign of harassment of commercial vessels sailing in international waters. A recent example of Iran's troubles occurred earlier this month when Iranian forces attempted to seize two merchant ships in international waters, seizures that were unsuccessful due to the actions of the USS McFall. And right here in the Indo-Pacific, there is no shortage of challenges faced by our two nations, along with our allies and partners. North Korea remains committed to antagonizing its neighboring countries, as evidenced by its launch of yet another intercontinental ballistic missile just last week, resulting in condemnations from around the globe. Additionally, and impossible to ignore, the People's Republic of China continues the rapid expansion of its navy, leveraging its maritime organizational strength to coerce and intimidate its neighbors into accepting illegitimate maritime claims. The People's Republic of China also continues to engage in illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing activities around the globe via its distant water fishing fleet, causing ecological and economic harm to the countries whose exclusive economic zones they infringe upon. It is imperative that we, the United States of America and Australia, continue to stand shoulder to shoulder ready to support our partners and allies as we confront these common challenges that endanger the freedom of millions as well as disrupt the flow of commerce around the globe. And as I've said before, economic security is indeed national security, and national security is economic security. As maritime nations, we cannot achieve security without the guarantee of unrestricted access to the maritime commons that serves as the lifeblood of our respective economies. The 19th century American naval scholar Alfred Thayer Mahan wrote in his seminal treatise, I quote, the influence of sea power upon history, the profound influence of sea commerce upon the wealth and strength of countries was clearly seen long before the true principles which governed its growth and, and prosperity were detected, unquote. This ship before us, along with His Majesty's Australian ship Canberra and our combined naval fleets play a crucial role in securing our ability to conduct unencumbered maritime trade across the globe, promoting the wealth and strength of our two nations 
along with those of our allies and partners. We can never forget that. And that is why it is so crucial that we continue to strengthen the bonds and the trust between our armed forces. Commissioning Canberra here and the country of its namesake city is a prime example of the deep bonds that underpin our relationship, as is the ongoing Talisman Sabre 23 exercise. However, at this moment, there is no greater testament to our enduring relationship than the AUKUS agreement, announced almost two years ago now. This generational accord came into being after a century's worth of cooperation, treaties, consultations, and trust building between the United States of America, the United Kingdom, and Australia. And we, the nearly one million sailors, Marines, and civilians in the Department of the Navy, are proud to play an important role in supporting our partners throughout the Royal Australian Navy and the Australian Shipbuilding Industrial Base on your journey to fielding a fleet of nuclear-powered, conventionally armed attack submarines. Two weeks ago yesterday, we celebrated the graduation of the first cadre of Royal Australian Naval Officers from our Navy Nuclear Power School. Lieutenant Commander Klein, Lieutenant Commander Hayden, and Lieutenant Hall are the first of many more Australian Naval personnel that we look forward to training in support of realizing AUKUS and our team at the Navy Nuclear Power Training Facility in Charleston, South Carolina. And while the delivery and successful operation of nuclear powered attack submarines by the Royal Australian Navy, including SSN AUKUS, and potentially up to five U.S. Virginia class submarines, is critical to addressing security concerns here in the Indo Pacific region, advancing our cooperation in research, technology development is equally important. By cooperating with one another on critical technologies, including cyber and artificial intelligence, to making advancements in undersea capabilities as well as hypersonic and counter-hypersonic technology, we will continue to innovate and field new systems and platforms that will enhance our ability to protect our sovereignty and project maritime power across the region, ensuring the stability. As I close, I know I cannot promise the crews of the USS Canberra a calm seas on every voyage that they make in the Indo-Pacific. However, I am confident that wherever USS Canberra is sailing and whatever challenges her crew may face, they are ready as reinforced by this warship's motto. And what is that? Thank you again for joining us this morning for this truly special and historic occasion for our fleet and our two nations. May God bless Australia, the United States of America, the blue and gold crews of the USS Canberra, and especially their families. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro. Sir, it would be an honor if you place Canberra in commission. On behalf of the President and the Secretary of the Navy of the United States, I hereby place United States ship Canberra in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Executive Officer, voice of colors and the commission pennant. Aye, sir. Ship's Company, attend hut. The commission pennant in professional national navies began to take form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the main mast head to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir.
Captain, the colors and commission pennant are proudly flying over USS Canberra. Meryl. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander Naval Military Personnel Command to Commander William Ashley, United States Navy. Subject, Pupers Orders, number 0538 of 27 February, 2023. When directed by reporting senior, detached from present duty, and report to pre-commissioning unit Canberra as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Canberra, report for duty as commanding officer. Admiral Gilday, United States ship Canberra is in commission, and I am in command, sir. Thank you, sir. Exec officer, set the watch. All right, sir. Or more. Officer Deck, is that the first watch? Aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative, and while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority of a ship of the line. We are honored to have Mr. Marty Wallens, former USS Canberra CAG2 crew member, and Mr. Ward Cook, chairman of the USS Canberra Commissioning Committee, with us today. Together they will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Shea Barsom from Dunedin, Florida. The petty officer of the watch is orographer's mate, first class, Antonio Von Bank from Beaumont, California. The messenger of the watch is mineman third class, Gilberto Polito Gonzalez from Los Angeles, California. And the boatswain's mate of the watch is Chief Boatswain's mate Robert Brown from Detroit, Michigan. Set the watch. On deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Detail forward, mark. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. The spirit of a U.S. Navy warship is the embodiment of her sponsor. Senator Maurice Payne authenticated the keel of this ship in Mobile, Alabama on March 10, 2020, where she imbued this ship with her unshakable sense of public service. Madam Senator, I would be honored if you would give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Thank you, Commander Ashley. Let me begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands and waters on which we meet here today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I want to acknowledge our many distinguished guests, particularly their excellencies, the Governor General and the Governor of New South Wales, my family and friends who are here with me today. But my primary acknowledgement this morning as ship's sponsor is to the women and men of the blue and gold crews of the USS Canberra and their captains, Commander Will Ashley, and Commander Bobby Barber. Ladies and gentlemen, there is an extraordinary atmosphere here today. It's palpable, it's rich, it's warm, it's emblematic 
of the United States and Australian relationship. And many of you come here today to this once in a lifetime event with your own stories about the United States Australian relationship. The crews of this ship, however, will now start a whole new book of their experience and indeed their mateship of the Australian and United States navies together. I could not be more honoured and proud to be your ship's sponsor. I walked through the ship yesterday. I spotted the odd red kangaroo there. That was good to see. And I want to particularly thank the ship's company for the warm welcome that you have given me. To the crews of the USS Canberra, there is a lot of history, powerful, intense history wound up in the naming of your ship and her commissioning today. I know that you will appreciate that as you go about the service of your nation. And for that service, I thank you all. I thank your families. I acknowledge them. The service they give so often across the seas. And to those who I have met here in Sydney this week, what an extraordinary honour for me to have had that opportunity. Thank you for making the trip to Australia. Thank you for being part of this extraordinary event. Finally, can I thank again Secretary of Navy Carlos del Toro and his distinguished predecessor Richard Spencer for the honour of being our ship's sponsor. And to the crew, the blue and the gold crews, thank you for bringing can do to the USS Canberra. It is finally left for me to say, officers and crew of the USS Canberra, man our ship and bring her to life.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crews of both Canberras salute you. We are proud to serve in our nation's navies. Canberras, ready to. Will the guests please be seated? Captain, USS Canberra is manned and ready, sir. Very well. Commodore Crawford, United States ship Canberra is manned and ready and reports for duty, sir. Very well. Secretary Del Toro, request permission to break your flag, sir. Break my flag, Captain. Aye, sir. Executive officer, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Secretary of the Navy is proudly flying over USS Canberra. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander William Ashley, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Canberra. Canberra. Boat raid, rest. Good morning. Uh, normally I would begin the speech by recognizing the distinguished visitors, high-ranking officials. There are so many here today, it would take my entire speech. But I'm truly amongst giants up here. So I'll simply start with thank you all for being here, both in person and virtually. Thank you to Dave Anderson, Lisa Anderson, and the entire commissioning support team for preparing us the last few days for this momentous occasion. Ward Cook, Ron Spence, and the Commissioning Committee, thank you for your tremendous support. I know it wasn't easy with the time frame that you had. Our wonderful families here and back home, including my wife, Kelly, daughter, Kira, a heartfelt thank you. Thank you for your daily sacrifices and your unwavering support. Without that, we are combat ineffective. We're lucky to have two outstanding ombudsmen who serve voluntarily as communication paths between myself and the families. Mrs. Kelly Meyer, Mrs. Katrina LaCroix, thank you for your commitment. To Captain Lehman and the PMS 501 team, together with Oslo USA, you gave us a great ship. She handles like a dream and meets every mission she was intended for. Your continued support was crucial in our voyage, and I know that we would not be here but for you. I've had the honor and pleasure of getting to know our ship's sponsor, Senator the Honorable Maurice Payne, who just gave the order to bring our ship to life. Her accomplishments and service lend themselves quite well to our can-do family. Welcome aboard, plank owner. We brought the ship here earlier this week. The sheer magnitude of the occasion hadn't quite hit us yet. We'd started to notice it some months ago when the Australian clearance dive team visited us in San Diego. It was our first Australian military visit. And then again, when Vice Admiral Hammond came for a visit last spring. Thank you, sir, for the funnel kangaroos. They look amazing. And as you saw, I couldn't wait to put them up. And most recently, we welcomed our newest crew member, Lieutenant Eamon O'Shea, our permanently assigned Royal Australian Navy Exchange Officer. And then finally we arrived here, the open arms and welcomed by Fleet Base East, HMAS Cuttable, and the people of Sydney and all of Australia as a whole, it really opened our eyes and our hearts to this event. As a ship captain, having something for the crew to rally behind is important to build on the unit cohesiveness and camaraderie 
Our ship's namesake makes that easy. We are honored to share the same name as the first USS Canberra, a heroic ship in her own right, but it's much deeper than that. We continue to recognize the sacrifice of the first HMS Canberra, whose fight helped protect the U.S. Marines on Guadalcanal. Naming the second USS Canberra renews the mateship of our two nations, just as it did back in 1943. This week, we have established our connectedness with HMS Canberra III. We sailed behind Captain O'Hara, great ship on the way into Sydney Harbor. We've enjoyed multiple events between the two crews, just they are amongst the ranks on the ship behind me. Their support and hospitality have been amazing and heartwarming. Captain O'Hara, I would gladly sail into harm's way alongside you, your ship, and your crew. Tomorrow we will strengthen our relationship with the city of Canberra as we visit our namesake city and take part in time-honored traditions and ceremonies. We are humbled by the invitation. So you can see the connections with our countries are much deeper than just a ship naming. Our friendship is much more strengthened because of it. The crew that you just saw bring this ship to life is one of the best I've ever served with in my 30 years in the Navy. They look out for each other, they love this ship, and they pour their blood sometimes tears, into her. I'm humbled every day to see them embody our can-do spirit. Our first commanding officer, Commander Mike Tyree, instilled a sense of that culture that will last for many times to come. I've also heard that all good things come in pairs. We're lucky to have two amazing crews. I've been with Blue Crews since the beginning, and I'm fortunate to have both Blue and Gold Crews on board. Gold Crews led by Commander Barber, an excellent ship captain. Thank you, Bobby, for letting me borrow your crew. Secretary Del Toro, Admiral Gilday, Commodore Crawford, you can count on us. We are ready for our nation's tasking. Thank you. Ship company, attend hut. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the benediction that will be offered by Lieutenant Commander Ireland. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for those who have walked so diligently, worked so diligently to create a ship that will serve our sailors and country. May it be used as an instrument of protection for those who cannot protect themselves. We ask that you hold fast to those who sail this ship. We put our trust in you, that you will preserve our sailors from the dangers of the sea and from those who would seek to cause harm to others and return our sailors safely home. Lord, just as you pull us towards the safety of your shores when we are adrift, may this ship and the sailors who man her safeguard life and freedom so that those who are afraid and in distress may take heart when they see the Canberra on the horizon. May those who sail this ship Go forth courageously, hold to what is good, true, and right. And should storms come, may they find shelter in your outstretched arms. Thank you, Chaplain Ireland. Canberra, cheers. Ships, hip hip, hip hip, hip hip. Canberra, on cap. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated for the departure of our platform guests.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Thank you for joining us today. Ship's tours will commence in 20 minutes. Please line up with the brow to your left if you wish to tour the ship. The last tour will be at 2.30 p.m. and buses will run continuously to the cuttable gate until 3.30 p.m. The ferry will depart at 12.30, 1.30, and 2.30 p.m. And you are welcome to enjoy refreshments provided by the Canberra Commission Committee under the large tent to your right. Ship's company, dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.